Welcome back, future criminologists. In this video, we will be discussing the crime of violation of domicile. Violation of domicile. The crime of violation of domicile is governed by Article 128 of the Revised Penal Code. Under Article 128, the crime of violation of domicile is committed by any public officer or employee who, not being authorized by judicial order, shall enter any dwelling against the will of the owner thereof, search papers or other effects found therein without the previous consent of such owner, or having surreptitiously entered said dwelling and being required to leave the premises, shall refuse to do so. Ito ay isang krimen na ginagawa ng official or empleyado ng gobyerno sa pamamagitan ng pagpasok sa tirahan, tahanan o bahay o pagsusuri sa mga dokumento na nasa loob ng bahay, tahanan o tirahan ng walang pahintulot galing sa may-ari o ayaw paglisan sa bahay, tirahan o tahanan pagkatapos malaman ng nagmamay-ari na palihim kang pumasok. From Article 128, Makikita natin na may tatlong paraan upang magawa itong krimen na ito. First, entering any dwelling against the will of the owner thereof. Second, searching papers or other effects found therein without the previous consent of such owner. Third, refusing to leave the premises after having surreptitiously entered said dwelling and after having been required to leave the same. To better understand it, let us discuss each mode. But before that, let us discuss first what is dwelling or domicile and who is the so-called owner. Dwelling Dwelling should be given a more liberal meaning than its meaning as an aggravating circumstance. Dwelling is a place that a person inhabits or any building or structure exclusively devoted for rest and comfort. So, yung structure or building Dapat ginagamit siya for rest and comfort to be considered as dwelling. Whether a building is a dwelling house or not depends upon the use. Kahit hindi siya mukhang bahay pero ginagamit siya as bahay, then it is considered dwelling. It includes the dependencies which have interior communication with the house. Halimbawa nito ay garahe na konektado sa bahay. It is not necessary that it be a permanent dwelling of a person. Pwedeng may bahay ako sa probinsya at the same time nagre-rent ako sa Baguio. Yung tinitirhan ko sa Baguio kahit hindi siya permanent, considered siyang dwelling. Who is the owner? The term owner should include a lawful occupant, even if not the owner of the structure, such as a lessee. Yung owner po dito, hindi kailangang nakapangalan sa kanya yung titulo o siya ang nagpagawa ng bahay. Ang ibig sabihin ng owner sa article na ito ay yung legal na nakatira. Now let us go back to the three modes. First mode, by entering any dwelling against the will of the owner thereof. In the first mode, Lack of consent will not suffice as the law requires that the offender's entry must be over the owner's objection, expressed or implied, not merely the absence of consent. Yung objections po pwedeng true words, example, the owner said, umalis ka dito, or written, may nakasulat po na bawal pumasok. Pwede din pong true actions even without words, for example, pumasok yung public officer. Nung nakita mo siya, tinuro mo yung door, implying na umalis siya. Or, nakita mo siyang papasok, hinarangan mo yung pintuan. Or, pag yung door po ay nakasara, implied prohibition na po ito. Paano pag pumasok siya at wala kang ginawa? No actions, no words, or written objection. Yung public officer hindi po magiging liable sa crime na ito under the first mode. Sabi natin kanina, Mere lack of consent is not enough. Dapat may express or implied objection. The owner need not be present at the time of entry. Take note, hindi kailangan na nandun yung may-ari. Remember, yung objection pwedeng written or implied. 
Next, second mode, by searching papers or other effects found therein without the previous consent of such owner. In the second mode, the entry is lawful or permitted or allowed, but the gist of the offense is a search conducted thereafter which was not consented to. Dito, allowed or permitted yung pagpasok niya. Kaso, pagpasok niya, nagkalkal siya ng mga papers or documents. Yung concept na pwede kang pumasok, hindi kasama doon yung karapatan mo para makialam sa mga bagay-bagay sa loob. The meaning of search is not just by looking or staring, but connotes a physical act of going around rooms, opening closets, pulling off wardrobes or drawers, or lifting objects. In the second mode, mere lack of consent is sufficient. Hindi kailangan ng objections, unlike in the first mode, expressed or implied, para maging liable under the second mode. The papers and other effects mentioned must be found in dwelling. Yung papers and other effects ay nasa loob ng bahay, tirahan o tahanan. What is the crime committed under the second mode if the offender is a private person? If the offender is a private person, the crimes is unjust vexation for the act of searching and theft if he takes away anything. Next, third mode, by refusing to leave the premises after having surreptitiously entered said dwelling and after having been required to leave the same. In the third mode, what is punished is the refusal to leave, the entry having been made surreptitiously. Dito, yung offender nakapasok ng palihim. Nung nakita siya ng may-ari, pinaalis siya agad. Kung ayaw niyang umalis, magiging liable siya sa crime na ito under the third mode. The request to leave must be promptly given upon discovery of the presence of the accused. Dapat yung pagpapalis ay agad-agad. If he was entertained or was asked to leave only after some displeasure, the surreptitious entry is deemed ratified. Kung yung owner, imbes na paalisin, pinaupo niya sa sala at nagkwentuhan pa, after a while, may hindi sila nagkasunduan. Yung pumasok ba, liable na under the third mode? Hindi na po siya liable kasi naratified na sa pag-entertain ni owner. Sa tatlong modes na ito, ano naman ang common elements sa kanila? First, offender is a public officer or employee. Second, he is not authorized by judicial order to enter the dwelling and are to make a search for papers and for other effects. Let us discuss each of the common elements. First element, offender is a public officer or employee. Violation of domicile is committed by a public officer authorized to implement a search warrant or warrant of arrest, but at the time of incident, he is not armed with warrant. Ang nagsiserve ng search warrant o warrant of arrest ay law enforcement agents. So basically, sila po ang nagkukumit ng crime na to. Also, the officers liable are those whose duty includes enforcing orders from the court such as sheriffs, process servers, and other personnel of the court. What if the act is committed by a private person or other public officer? If the acts are committed by a private person or any other public officer, the crime is trespass to dwelling and not violation of domicile. We will discuss trespass to dwelling in a separate video. Second element, he is not authorized by judicial order to enter the dwelling and or to make search for papers and for other effects. Kailan ba authorized? Authorize lang po pag may judicial order. Halimbawa, true, a writ of execution, writ of possession, writ of attachment, warrant of arrest, search warrant, order of demolition, or protection order. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to share it and to subscribe.